My name is Brian Rector. I'm a chiropractor, local chiropractor here in the Monterey Peninsula. I'm the owner and operator of Monterey Chiropractic Group and Rector Creating Wellness Center. So we have one of the largest chiropractic centers and wellness centers on the peninsula. We specialize in functional medicine, functional nutrition, functional exercise, and movement of the body. I often refer to 1 Corinthians 6 uh, verses 19 through 20 where it says, do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. When I take this verse and I put it into overall health and well-being, I look at it as this. God has given me a gift, this body. If we think about receiving a gift from God, wouldn't we take the most care of this gift? Wouldn't we cherish it and respect it with all of our heart? In my practice, I often use this analogy. If I was to give you a car and say, okay, at the age of 16, here is your car. It's your first car, but it's the only car you'll ever receive. How well would you take care of that car? Now, in reference to getting a gift from God, this is our vehicle. Our body is our vehicle to express life, love, and health throughout uh, the people we meet and throughout the people we touch. So we have to think on every decision we make towards health. Is it moving us closer to health or away? Health is never stagnant. It's constantly moving back and forth. So we have to make sure we make the right decisions. Number one, we have to drink more water. Statistics show now that for every 50 pounds of body weight, we should be drinking at least 16 ounces of water. So research also shows that if you exercise at least a half hour a day, you need to add another 16 ounces of water. Please don't drink 16 ounces of water before you go to bed. Uh, at night, you'll be getting up a lot, uh, a lot more frequently than you'd like. You wanna spread out the water throughout the day uh, and sip it. Uh, just like a dog would drink out of the bowl, doesn't drink all the water at the end of the day. The second tip uh, that I would give uh, people to make it super simple, is take all your meals for the week and you want to have 75% of those meals have green vegetables in them. That makes it very, very super simple. Number three, again, keeping it super simple, is try to purchase as many organic foods as possible. And if you have to make a choice between greens, vegetables, fruits, and proteins and meats, you want to make sure you at least buy organic meats and proteins. Good advice to not drink 16 ounces of water right before you go to bed. Probably shouldn't do it right before you get on stage either. But anyway, for about the last 35 years, I've utilized a tool called a bat. For many years, it was as a player playing baseball. And I know how to grip a bat. I've done it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. About five years ago, I started coaching softball and baseball, and it's amazing how kids don't know how to grip a bat. We'll tell them to go grab a bat, and they'll come up, and they'll be like this, and we'll say, no, 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 the other end, and they turn it around like this, and then they hold it like this, and then we say, get in the batter's box, and the pitcher's over there, and they're like this, and it's incredible that we need to teach them how to grip the bat so that they can swing. When they have a good grip, they're more successful. When they have a good grip, the, ball doesn't, the bat doesn't go flying and hit people in the head. The grip is important in a bat. Picking up a ball, a baseball or a softball is kind of intuitive. It's a round ball. You grab it and it's easier to figure out how to grip and throw. But a football, not so much. It's not round. There's tons of ways you could grab a football. And I've seen people grab it like this. It's not very successful that way, and you won't throw it very far, and you'll likely miss your target. You may want to grab it like this, and it is called a dead duck when you throw it that way through the air as it wobbles through the air. If the ball's wet, you won't be able to hold on to it. But when you get the right grip on a football, when your hands are holding it correctly, and this seems odd, it seems like your hands should be here 
with all the laces, but they're not. Then you're able to get the best projection, the best spiral, and the best opportunity to hit your target every time. We're going through a series called Getting a Grip. Grip is important. We've talked about getting a grip on your schedule. We've talked about getting a grip on relationships. And we're going to continue that today on getting a grip on your health. Most of us occasionally take time to assess ourselves and to, to maybe make some, set some goals, make some resolutions. And the beginning of the year is a common time for this to happen. As we look at our, ourselves, our, our lives, our schedules, our relationships, we, we see that there's some areas of work, some areas that we can fix. More often than not, those areas relate to our physical body. They relate to our health. Four out of the top ten common resolutions are related to our health. To lose weight, to get more sleep, to exercise, and to stop smoking. All very good resolutions. And we really should care about our bodies, and I think most of us do care about our bodies. We care how they look. We care how they're maintained. We care about our bodies. I think we often avoid or skip over the fact that God cares about our bodies as well. 3 John 1, 2 says, Dear friend, I pray all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. New Living Translation says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. We know that God cares about our soul. We know that God cares about what happens for eternity with us, but we often don't know or don't admit or don't focus on that he cares about our physical being as well. I'd like to read from Romans 12, uh, verses 1 through 2. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy to Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. The caring for our bodies it isn't just something God wants us to do, but it's an opportunity. It's a way for us to worship God. Not worship our bodies, but by caring for our bodies, worship God. And worshiping God is really giving Him worth. It's, it's showing Him that we find Him valuable. I have four children at home, and I regularly give them gifts, whether it's a birthday or a Christmas or just because. Usually my wife buys them, but I take the credit for giving them the gifts. But sometimes they'll take these gifts and abuse them and not care for them, and a gift ends up not lasting very long. When I give my child a gift and it doesn't last long, I kind of take it personally. I feel a little bit devalued. Like, do you realize I had to work to buy that? We had to go through the trouble of getting it. We had to think about how important you would think it is. We would choose the right gift for you. And you just ruined it. And that takes away from my desire, unfortunately, to give them gifts. Our bodies are a gift from God. I liked what Dr. Rector said about our bodies being like a vehicle. Now you see, some of us got like a, a Yugo, and some of us maybe got a Maserati, but, but these are our bodies, are our vehicles, and this is what God has given us. And no matter what we've received, we should care for it. As much as we care about our bodies, I, I truly believe that God cares more about our physical health and condition than we do. I believe that he's proven this concern throughout history. In Genesis, we, we read about the creation story. We, we read about God speaking things into being. And we read about him taking dirt with his hands and molding man and woman and breathing life into it. 
From the very beginning, God has taken special care and has concern for our bodies. 1 Corinthians six nineteen through 20 reads, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? And I want to stop right there. Our bodies, those of us who know Jesus, those of us who have come to faith in Jesus and now have a relationship with God, have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Back in the the biblical times, they they used an an ark called the Ark of the Covenant that was a very precious tool to carry the Holy Spirit. And they cared for it, and it got stolen at one point, and it was not a good thing. But we understand that our bodies now are temples. How precious should we see those? I think God walks with us as He dwells in us through His Holy Spirit. But oddly, I think that we don't recognize that as much as if He was physically standing next to us and walking with us. And I wonder, why is it harder to be motivated by the Holy Spirit in us as opposed to a physical being next to us? I don't actually have the answer. But I hope that we can have the imagery and the understanding that God is with us each and every step of every day. I was thinking about our bodies and the value that they are, and it got me thinking about the Antiques Roadshow. I'm not sure if you've seen this show or not, but people will bring their rare finds, and sometimes they're worth about a nickel. Uh, Sometimes they're worth more. But everybody comes there thinking it's worth something. And what is something worth? It's worth what somebody else will pay for it. We may have a home that we think is worth a million dollars, but if the market says it's worth half of that, guess what? It's worth half of it. People will go in there with these treasures and they think, oh, this is an heirloom being passed down from generation to generation in my family. And they forgot to look at the bottom and it said H.O. in China. And they realized it was just made in China like 40 years ago. The value isn't there. Listen to the next part of this passage. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Do you know the price you were bought at? Jesus Christ came and lived on this earth and died for each and every one of us. He found us so valuable that he took on the form of a human, lived a perfect life, And then gave up that life for us. Jesus felt pain. Jesus could feel the warmth of the sun on his face. And he felt what it was like to die on our behalf. When we look at that, something is as valuable as the price paid for it. And we know that Christ paid with his life. We should see ourselves as valuable. These vessels, these vehicles that he's given us as valuable as well. The Holy Spirit dwells in each follower of Christ. But he doesn't leave it to ourselves. He doesn't say, okay, take care of your body, go. He says, I've got more than that. And in Matthew 6, 25, we read, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? God realizes we have physical needs and that we're going to need help taking care of our bodies. And he says, I'll do it. I'll care for you. I'll help you along. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's not leaving us on our own to care for our bodies. He's saying he will be there for us. When we look at the grip, we've been talking about four components. The first component is God. God, by having an understanding that God cares about our health, 
And that by having understanding that God will give us what we need is the start, is the main point to getting a grip on our health. God shows us his depth of concern for our physical bodies from Genesis through Revelation. And today I want us to join him in that concern for our bodies. The reality is God will be with us each and every moment of this coming week as His Spirit lives in His followers. Let us be motivated by that, that understanding that He's with us and that He'll give us what we need. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31 says He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary And young men stubble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. God will give us what we need if we seek him out. If we place our bodies and the care for them in his care, he'll give us what we need. God is number one, and as we've been talking about, relationships are number two. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. In Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Relationships, when it comes to our health, are essential. They must happen. Because when we're alone, we have a chance to fall down. We have a chance to stumble. We have a chance to get off track. And if there's no one there to sharpen us, if there's no one there to pick us up, the chances are we won't get up. The chances are we won't continue. Relationships that offer encouragement and support are highly effective we need to understand that there are lots of different types of relationships that we can have as it comes to our health. I uh, participate in a, an online community called Strava, and there's others that are like Map My Run or Run Keeper, and it's an opportunity to, to share your, your physical endeavors with another community. And so if I go for a run, I log that on there, and my, my friends in that community get to see it. And They get to say, good job, nice pace, you know, what happened there? How's your body feeling? Or haven't seen you in a while, what's going on? That online community has been helpful to me. I have a relationship with my wife who is constantly encouraging me to get out there and to take care of myself. She's telling me to to exercise. She's putting together great meals at home so that I can have good nutrition. She's making sure that I'm doing those things that I need to do. One of the big ones is she reminds me weekly of the importance of a Sabbath. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But these relationships are essential for success in getting a grip on our health. I have people I work with... uh, uh, just before church, I spoke with somebody who was encouraging me uh, along my, my training, and it's been great. But in my preparation for this message, I realized that there was one relationship that I've been neglecting, and that was the relationship with my doctor. When I became 40 years old, I made a promise to my wife that I broke. And it was that every year I would get checked out that I realize, and everybody knows this, that maintaining your health has a lot to do with the medical community. I had told her that every year I'll get a physical, I'll get checked out, I'll, I'll have whatever work the doctor says I need to do. I'm approaching 44, and 
when I was 40 was the last time I did it. So through this time, I've realized that now I'm going to do it. I'm going to call my doctor. I'm going to get checked out. And hopefully, he'll say everything's good. But the fact is, if something's off, I need to know about it. If I'm going to get a grip on my health, I need to know what my health is like. I I can't see everything by looking in the mirror. But there's a lot going on inside that I don't know about unless I get it checked out. Relationships are essential to getting a grip on your health. The I in grip is inner life. It's what's going on inside of us. And what, what, what's happening in us that causes us to want to care for ourselves? You know, for many of us, we look in the mirror and we don't like what we see. And that's what's going on inside us. We want to change this outward appearance so we'll feel better inside. For some of us, we, we don't have control of our life. We don't have control of our schedule. We, we can't control our appetite. There's this stuff going on inside us, stress related to life. There could be so many things going on inside that are important to know for us to get a grip on our health. Psalm 139, 23 through 24 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. When we take this passage and we apply it to our health, we need to ask God, what's going on inside? If I am taking care of myself, what's my motivation? If I'm not taking care of myself, why not? What are the obstacles? What's happening inside? Because I really believe that our motivation will usually determine our outcome. And why we're doing something is going to impact our results. If I apply this to my role as a husband, if I seek to be the best possible husband because I want to please my wife, she's going to let me down. And when that happens, where's my motivation? If I want to be the best possible dad, and my goal in life is to make my kids happy or to lead them the right way so that they'll be able to grow up and be the best adults in their life, and they let me down, then all of a sudden my motivation changes, and it's a little bit harder. Several years ago, though, I shifted my approach, and I try very hard to apply this to every area of my life. And it's by reflecting upon Colossians 3.23, and it says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, So working for the Lord, not human masters. What's going on inside? What are you motivated by? If it's not God, then I think you're in trouble. If our motivation is to drop a pant size or to just live long enough to see our grandkids, we're going to fall short. But if we want to get a grip on our health because we want to do it for God, That changes everything. And why should we want to do it for God? I think Ephesians 2.10 hits it perfectly. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Today I'm saying the reason we should care about our health The reason that we should get a grip on our health is so that we can do good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do. We may be looking at things of our health and saying, hey, it's not bothering anybody else. What I eat, the chemicals I put in my body, whether I smoke, whether I don't exercise, whether I don't get sleep, whether I stress out, that doesn't impact anybody else. But the fact of the matter is it does. If we die prematurely because of the way we cared for ourselves. If when we wake up in the morning, we don't have energy to approach the day and we just try to get through it, we're not going to see the opportunities God has for us there. If we die young, we have the great blessing of being with God forever, but he may have still had stuff for us to do here. Taking care of our health needs to be because we want to please God 
We want to be used by God. There's people over here that ignore their health and don't pay any attention to it. And I can tell you that was me for a long time. I was really good at making excuses. I was busy, had a full work schedule. I volunteered in ministry. I had a family. And bit by bit, I started putting on weight, started having a hard time breathing as I walked. I didn't sleep. I had horrible insomnia. I would wake up tired every single day. And then I shifted to over here. And I got into a danger zone. One that I think we all need to be careful of. And that is that we can't allow our health, our pursuit of health, to become an idol. You see, I ended up waking up early in the morning to spend time with God. No, to exercise. I'd stay up late in the evening to get my quiet time in. No, to exercise. My life revolved around pursuit of health. And the fact was I didn't even know what health meant. I went through a two-month period where I pretty much only ate carrots, celery, and hummus. I lost 28 pounds. It may have looked like that was healthy, but I was weak. I had no energy. I lost muscle. I was in a worse position to be used by God because my idol was losing weight. I wasn't seeking God's direction. I wasn't reaching out to him. I wasn't talking to godly people. It was me on my own trying to figure out what to do. And in doing so, I placed my health, as skewed as my view was, in front of God. God needs to be the center of us getting our grip on our health. God needs to be where it all starts and where it all ends. Getting a grip on our health also takes practices. We can sit and listen to a message. And we can maybe be inspired a little bit and say, I'm going to go do it. But what does go do it mean? What does that look like? Well, I say today that what we need to do is we need to start by identifying small steps that you can take. You know, for some of us, it may seem so overwhelming. For me, I realized that I needed to get in shape. I realized I needed to exercise. I realized I needed to start eating less. I realized that I needed to lose weight, but I didn't know how I was going to get there from here. Small steps. It starts with God. It starts with prayer. It starts with asking God what he wants you to do about your health. Take a Sabbath. What's a Sabbath? A Sabbath is a day off. It's a day of rest. We read in the creation story that God created all that was in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. I don't know about you, but I don't think it's because he was tired. I think it's because he was trying to set an example for us. He was trying to show us what we need to do. A Sabbath is about connecting with God on one day out of the week. Connecting with Him, spending more time with Him, connecting with our loved ones, building relationships in our life, and resting our bodies. I've spent a lot of days in the gym, and I've talked with a lot of people, and a lot of them will talk about how they work out seven days a week, and they don't understand why they're not getting the results that they want to have. And I say, it's Sabbath. You've got to give your body a chance to rest. Your muscles need a chance to rest. You need an opportunity to recuperate. It's scientifically proven fact. Sabbath will help. Two weeks ago, we talked about getting a grip on your schedule. Apply that to this. Just like last week, we talked about how you can apply your schedule to relationships. Apply it to your health. Schedule exercise. We schedule appointments and meetings and we get to them. Put exercise in there. How about this one? Schedule a bedtime. I can tell you for me, so many nights I wanted to just veg out in front of the TV because now finally my day's over and I can just sit there and do nothing but watch some colors flash around on a screen. And then my alarm goes off early in the morning and you know what I do, right? 
snooze. That's what we do. I'm like, oh, I'm so tired this morning. Giving no credit to the fact I'm tired because I stayed up late the night before, wasting away in front of the TV. Turn off the TV. See, a shortage of sleep is associated with a higher risk of obesity. It's associated with diabetes. It's associated with memory loss. Sleep is essential for health. We need to allow our bodies to rest. Stress. I read from the Mayo Clinic that 75 to 90% of all doctor's office visits are related to stress in one way or the other. Because we don't deal with our stress. We just have it. How do you deal with stress? Well, you start by praying about it. You start eliminating things in your life that are adding stress. Maybe the job you have is not conducive to your health. I'm very close to someone who's moving out of his profession because of the stress that it has caused him. It has made him very unhealthy. And he had to step away and move on. Create a menu. Don't just figure out what food's going to happen as you go. 1 Corinthians 6, 12 says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. So many of us are mastered by food. It was interesting in the video, we threw up a piece of cake and it said, that's leading you away from health. The reality is that you can have cake. There's nothing wrong with having cake. Now, if that's a main staple of your diet, you're probably in trouble, but it's okay to have cake. That's not what we're talking about here, but it's not allowing cake to be a driving force in your life or donuts or coffee for that matter. We need to Pay attention to what we're putting in our bodies. And by planning ahead, we're better off. One of my biggest things is that I don't pack myself a lunch or snacks often throughout the day. So what do I do? I either don't eat or I eat garbage. But if I just took the time to plan ahead and bring the right food with me, it'd be there and ready for me. I had an interesting thought. If Jesus came over for dinner, what would we serve him? Would we pull out a quick bag of Cheetos and hand it to him? I don't think so. I really don't think so. We'd come up with something good. What about applying that to our lives and what we look at? Eat smaller portions. Trick yourself by using smaller plates. Use a big plate, fill it halfway up with vegetables. There are so many small steps we can take. Get a pedometer, a Fitbit, something else that will help you track your steps. I have a friend who just got one for Christmas, and she and her sister and her husband are in a competition to see how many steps they can do, and it's great. Because I see her when she's picking up her kids from school. She gets there a few minutes early and she's back up and down the the hill. She'd usually just be sitting talking and now she's going back and forth building up her steps. How about setting an alarm if you have a desk job and every hour or so standing up, walking around your office, going outside, stretching. How about, we can get a three for one here. You set up time with a friend to pray while you're walking. You get God, you get relationship, and you get health all in one. Small steps are easy. We can do it. We can make these small steps that will help us be more healthy, which will ultimately allow us to be better used by God. If we don't have the energy, if we don't have the body of health, then we're in trouble. Get an accountability partner. In my life, that has proven to be one of the most beneficial things. An accountability partner to tell me, Keith, stop. Slow down. You're doing too much in this realm. You're talking about fitness too much. You're worried too much about what you're eating. Or the other end. Hey, Keith, I I noticed I haven't seen anything on Strava for a while. Are you exercising a different way? Or you've been lazy? Accountability is huge. And here at Shoreline, we do have our Created to Live ministry. And I want to encourage you to to give that a try. 
On February 10th is our next meeting. It's Wednesday, February 10th in the Parkside Room here on the Monterey campus. And it's going to be a time to, to get a good overview of what the ministry is about. February 24th, they're, they're starting small groups and they're going to be going through the Daniel plan. This is one tool. There's lots of tools out there. But this is one tool with a group that will help you look at all of the areas of your life. They'll even look at how faith plays into your life as we talked about today. They'll talk about food. They'll talk about fitness. They'll talk about focus. There's so much there that can help you. But ultimately, it's about our motivation. We need to get a grip on our health because we want to be able to do the good works God has for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you care about our health even more than we do. Uh, Father, I pray that you would move through Shoreline Community Church. Lord, those who are already on their way to getting a grip on their health, Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them, you would encourage them. Those who are far from the process, Lord, I pray you would draw them in. Lord, I pray that we would run out of seats at our Created to Live ministry, Lord. That there would be such a demand that we'd have to figure out to move to a new location. Lord, I pray that you would breathe life into this church body. And that through that, we would be able to reach more and more people for you. Be more your hands, more your feet, and more your voice in this world for years and years to come. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to hand off to our online community. And then I have one announcement, and that is that we do have prayer Bibles still available. They're for, available for sale. Well, thank you so much for being part of our worship service today. And, and you may have noticed in this message today that there's a real challenge for spiritual growth. To not just go to church, not just follow a service online, uh, not just even put your faith in Jesus, but to grow and to walk more closely with Him. One of the best ways you can do that is to dig into His Word. Uh, there's all kinds of Bibles. Here at Shoreline, we use the NIV, and this is a study Bible. If you've never gotten a study Bible before, if you've never used a study Bible, I'd encourage you to not only have your own Bible, but to go deeper, to learn about the history, the background, the, the context of what's happening. So I encourage you to get a Bible and to read it every day. If you're not sure where to start, go on our website and just follow the daily reading. You can click right on any device or turn to your Bible and follow that section. That'll get re you ready for next week's message. I also want to encourage you to take some next steps in your spiritual growth. You can go onto Shoreline's website. You'll see the address right here on the screen. And take next steps of growth. We have all kinds of resources and materials. Take another step. Go deeper. If you look on the website, you can't find what you need. Give us a call at the church. But we want to help you take more steps in your spiritual growth. Well, God bless you. Have a great week. And hopefully we'll see you back here next week.